Shalom to the elect of Israel. Let's begin the lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, the one that woke us up this morning, the one that gave us the statutes and commandments and the laws, the one that made sure that in the land of our captivity, we will remember ourselves, the one that gave us his only begotten Son, his only begotten Son, the creator of the heaven and the earth, he sent him here in the flesh to go on the cross to die for the children of Israel. That's right. He died for the children of Israel once again. He didn't die for everybody. No. He died for the children of Israel. Law, statutes, and commandments were given to the children of Israel. The so-called Latinos, the so-called Hispanics. So-called Native American, Native Indian, Negro, Blacks, Caribbean spread across the four corners of the world. They are the children of Israel. And that's who Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai died for the children of Israel. Again, let's give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, our heavenly father, for the mercies of David, which he had poured upon us in these last days. Who says that the Lord doesn't love you? He could have left you, eh? eh? He could have left you in the pit. Yes. He could have continued to allow you to believe all the garbage that Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man is selling you. But no, he's showing you love in the land of your captivity to remind you, to wake you up, to tell you that it's time to go home. That's right. It's time to go home. Wake up. Eh? This is what the Lord is doing. For us in this last days. So again, honor, glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our heavenly father, and his only begotten son. Oh, his only begotten son. The one who put the song in our mouth. Hey, the one that we are glorifying. Yes, the one that we are waiting for. He coming with thousands and thousands of chariots, angels, eh, to turn this place upside down. Eh? But before he does that, he is going to redeem his elect. Eh? He is going to redeem his elect into the beautiful ship that he is coming with. The one Esau, Edom call UFOs. The one that is keeping Esau, Edom family. They cannot sleep. All they can talk about is UFO, UFO, UFO. But we know that what? They are the chariots of Israel. Hmm? That's right. You can get that account in the book of 2 King chapter 2, verse 11. When Elisha saw Elijah being beamed up, he says, my power, my power, the chariot of Israel. That's right. They are the chariot of Israel. Because why? The Lord didn't reveal his secret to the Edomites. And because he says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to him. Yes, they, are, they have their physicists. They have their biologists. And whatever you want to call them, eh? They go into these big institutions, eh? They get all these degrees, eh? But we, look at us, family, the, you see, look at us. We are telling you that, listen, they are not UFOs. We are telling you that, what? They are the chariot of Israel. Because what? Amos chapter 3 verse 7 tells us what? The Lord does nothing but he reveals his secret to his, what? Actually, before, uh, before let's just make sure that we are quoting it right. Let's go to the book of Amos, eh? The book of Amos. Oh, come on, come on. What's happening here? The book of Amos, chapter 3. Is it 3 7? You no, know, let's find out. We have to do it. Listen, this is the work, the, the work of the Lord. We don't cut corners. It says, surely, yes. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It says, surely, here. Yeah. It says, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's right. This is what the king did for us. He is the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the king of kings, the Lord of laws, the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega. That's right. The beginning and the ending, the first Adam. That's right. And the last Adam, Yahweh Shai. That's right, family. He is coming with thousands and thousands of chariots. And before he comes, family, this place is going to be on fire. And as you're going to hear from this professor's mouth, 
This is a guy that I follow, George Galloway. Yes, I follow from the uh, mother of all talk shows. This gentleman was on the show yesterday, and he said something profound. I've used that, that name. I've used that, that, that uh, what is it called, that man to do lessons, to edify the sheep. And he's again saying the same thing. Because why? The Lord, eh? the Lord is showing them that in eventually every kingdom has to come to an end. But let's do another family. Let's give glory to our king. He is the root and offspring of King David. He is the bright and morning star. The king of kings, the Lord of lords. The beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega. This is his gospel. So family, that's the name that we pray. That's the king that we can't wait to worship in the kingdom. That's right. That's all we're thinking about. Face to face with Yahweh Shai. Because he says he's going to drink wine with us for the first time. Family, I'm looking forward to that. You better believe it. You better believe it. I'm looking forward to drinking wine with the creator of the heaven and the earth, Yahweh Shai. And to see our people finally back on top, the elect of Israel. At the end, he says, all Israel shall be saved. That's right. That's how merciful our power, Yahweh, is. He could have left every, all of us hey, here. He could have destroyed it because it was us that didn't keep the covenant. But guess what? Being the father that he is. And because he says, this, he says what? With family, our Lord, Yahweh, full of tender mercies. Hey, that's why he continually, family, every day in and day out, he's sending his prophets out there. He says, just preach. Whether they hear or forbear, continue to preach, continue to preach, continue to preach. Keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again. Because when I bring the judgment, they have no more excuse. That's right. Nobody can say that they didn't hear it. Oh no, the same thing Noah did. Noah was out there for 120 years preaching and they said, look at this old man. This man has lost his mind. Look at what he's building until the flood came. That's why Yahweh Shai reminded us in the book of Matthew 24 that what? It's just going to be like the days of Noah. Hmm. It's going to be the like days of Noah. Everything is happening. The system is collapsing. Third World War is at the door and guess what? Ray Ray and Puki is still at the corner selling drugs. They're seeing the prophets preaching out there. Hey? And Kenesha, Shekua, whatever name they, are, they place on our people. Yes, they are out there being proud. Hey? Meanwhile, the prophets are out there preaching. That's why Yahweh Shai said it's just going to be like the day of Noah. Yeah, Kisha is out there hey? with her wig all the way to the ground. Hey? Red, blue, green. That's right. Hey? Eyelashes to here. That's right. But they are not taking heed. But the Lord says, continue to preach. Continue to preach. Whether they will hear or whether they forbear. Family, let's get into it. Let's, before we do that, let's give double honors to the head apostles from the great millstone that touched this truth. That's right. Salutation, peace to the brothers day in and day out. Eh? Anytime, any hour, you're going to find a video from these brothers. Eh? Edifying the sheep. Edifying the sheep. Nobody is going to say that they didn't hear the Hebrew Israelite preaching. Nobody is going to say that. Hey, that's how merciful the Lord is. He is sending his prophets out there day in and day out. No more excuses. So when he brings the judgment, nobody can say that he didn't warn you. We are the mouthpiece of the Lord. You better believe it. Hmm? And we are telling you before the judgment comes. The judgment is at the door. Salutation, peace to those brothers doing this, this work. Eh? The reward is coming. The reward is coming. We are getting a kingdom like no other. Lord willing. Lord willing. This professor here, I've spoke about him before. He appeared on um, George Galloway show yesterday. And he said a few things. And uh, we're going to allow him to talk. And then I have another uh, article that I'm going to share with you. And then family, when it's all said and done, I hope you are edified. And the Lord will get the glory and the honor and the praise. Let's get into it. He is the one and only Professor Richard Wolf. Always a popular guest on this show. Professor Wolf, uh, welcome back. Before I turn to the economy and the bricks, let me take the temperature with you. 
on uh, how the American gerontocracy reached the stage that it evidently has reached in these last couple of days. Now, I'm not ageist. How can I be? I'm getting older myself. And I just congratulated Mick Jagger on how he moves at the age of 80. He certainly moves a lot better than Mitch McConnell appears to be moving. What conclusion or observation would you make about that? Well, you know, the United States, like the United Kingdom, is a country whose hegemonic empire is now part of its past. And like the British, the Americans are not going quietly or gracefully or gently into the decline of their particular economic system and their particular uh, empire. And so it is very fitting in its own bizarre way for the oldest amongst us, those who have lived for the longest time in the empire period of the United States, to be holding on for dear life, because that really represents what the United States as a society is now doing, trying to hold on to what it once was in the face of the bricks of China, of a changing global south that really is now in the ascendancy in a way that almost everyone can see. And it, the United States is afraid to embrace the need for change, and so it holds on to the ancient and oldest symbols of what it once was. Let's pause it there. Because at the end of it all, it is the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem. Actually, let's begin with this here. Ecclesiasticus chapter 25, verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in mine heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. That's right. The Lord listed all our enemies. Eh? Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man is at the top. That is the book of Psalm 83. That's why the king himself said what? And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. The kingdom is coming to an end, America. The last leg of the Roman Empire. Family, you living in Rome 2.0. That's right. And according to Bible prophecy, like Yahweh Shai told us, that what? The testimony of the king Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. You see? You see that he said what? America is holding on to dear life. But one thing they forget, eh? To realize that what? It is not America. It is the Lord, Yahweh, that gave them the power. I just want to go some, I just want to do something here quickly. This is the king. It says the king acknowledges God. This is Nebuchadnezzar back in Babylon. He had a dream. Eh? No, the thing is, he was so proud. You see, when he built the kingdom, no, when the Lord gave him the kingdom. Because actually, I want to jump. Go back. Let's bring this here first. I think I'm jumping ahead here. Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. The reason why he said this, he made this statement, we're going to get it from the top. Okay? It's a Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watches and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the, king, in the kingdom of men and give it to Given it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. Let's look up that word basest, okay? Just so you know, the Edomite, the self proclaimed white man, their kingdom started with who? Alexander the Great. The Greek, that's right. The Greek. It was Alexander that took down what? Pe pe um, the meat and the per and Persia. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm hiccup. One second. 
he, um, the Greek, Alexander the Great, that's the beginning of Esau Edom kin kingdom. That's when wickedness is found. That's when wickedness increased. You can get that account in the book of 1 Maccabee, chapter 1. Let's look at the basis of men first. And the basis of men, you don't have to look far to see the state of America and the West in general. That is why a five-year-old boy can go. Actually, you don't even need your father, your parents' permission. Esau is tell, telling you that if your parents de decided that you cannot change yourself, you come. We will arrest your parents. That's right. That's why the Lord is saying, let's see who is ruling over you. He says, low, lowliest of station. That's the basis of men. Low in every, low in morals. Hey? Eh? That is Esau Edom. That is what they do. They can't give you definition of a woman. That's why they tell, they're telling you now, right now, that we have more than two genders. That's right. We have more than two genders. But family, let's get into the story. Let's get here. Let's go back and read. Just so you know, we're going to fly through this. Daniel 4.1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high power have wrought towards me. How great are his science and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Hmm? The vision of the great tree. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my head and the visions of, of, the, the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. These are all his witchcraft, family, his wise men, okay? And I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. It goes to show you that the, pow the power that we serve, family, Yahweh, is a strong tower. There's no other power in the heaven or above the heaven, eh? That can come close to the power that we serve. And his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Family, those, those two entities are the only pow powers that matters. That's right. All the gods of these nations are nothing but idols, including sweet baby Jesus. That's right. The pale skin, blue eyes, blonde hair. That's right. He is also an idol. Hey, he says here. Belshazzar, that's the name that they gave to who? Daniel. Oh, Belshazzar, master of the magician, because I know that the spirit of the ho holy gods is in thee. So even the book at Nazar realized that the power that is in Daniel family doesn't compare to any other power. Hmm. So if the Lord said, I have set a bound for you and you cannot pass it, guess what? That is what has happened to America. And we are, tell, we are telling you that this place is going down. The Lord says, whether they will hear or whether they forbear, continue to preach the word. That's it. He says here, Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the vision of my dream that I have seen. And the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth. And the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong. And the height thereof reached unto heaven. And the side thereof into the end of all the earth. That is Nebuchadnezzar. The Lord built him up. He is the tree. He gave him the rulership. Hey? But America, look at themselves. The so-called self-proclaimed 
white man look at himself today and he think everything that he has, it was by his own power. That is this why we continue to say that the terror that the Lord is bringing upon this earth, when it's all said and done, hey, you don't have to convince anybody that what? We serve the true power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shah. Everybody under the heaven is going to know that the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not to be played with. Hey! It says here, Daniel 4.13, I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher, and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said, Thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. That's right. The Lord brought him down because he was so proud. Hey, we were so proud. He says, Oh, look at what I have built. That's right. And immediately, the moment that word came out of his mouth, the Lord brought him down. He reduced him to an animal. That's right. He, he says here, Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his root in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, eh? in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in, in the grass of the earth. This is what the Lord did to him. He said, let his heart be changed from man's and let his beast heart be given un unto him. Eh? And let seven times pass over him. This is what the Lord did to Nebuchadnezzar when he was so proud, when he was bragging about how he built the kingdom. The Lord brought him down. That's what he says here, yeah, verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. You hear that? It is the Lord that is ruling. That's right. And give it here eh, and give it, it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. You hear the family? You can read this whole thing here. The vision family is long, but it's a beautiful chapter. Daniel 4. At the end of the day, there's the Lord. If you can go back, eh? and then the moment the Nebuchadnezzar opened his mouth and bragged about how he built this kingdom, the Lord, oh, the Lord brought him down quickly. That's right. He reduced him to a beast state. Eh? His nails grew. That's right. He was in the dew family. He lived in the jungle. This is what the Lord did to him. And then the Lord showed him mercy again. Just so, so the Lord can show his power. You see, the Lord builds you up and then he brings you down. That is why it's hard for America to see. Everybody, like you listen to social media, it's hard for people to believe that the Lord is about to turn this place into the lake of fire. They can see it. Yes, because the secret and the Lord says what? He revealed his secret to what? His prophets. The, he, only his prophets are going to know the mysteries of this book. That's why they cannot see. The Lord has blinded them. But seeing is believing them. Eh? Again, let's go to the book of Psalm 75. It says, lift not up your horn, eh? your power. The Lord gave you the power. Psalm 75, 5. He gave you the power. He said, don't lift it up. Don't be proud. Hey. Like the faith that the Lord has given us, it's a gift. You see, Ephesians 2, 8, it's a gift. So we are very mindful how we, are, we, how we speak, how we walk in this path that the Lord has created for us. Because all glory, honor, praises go unto the power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai. Because we were once in the world doing whatever our heart desire and the Lord show us mercy. So in turn, we Ah, glorifying the Lord because we could have been like those out there. Hmm. So he says, nobody should be proud. The Lord loves meekness. He loves loneliness. He loves humility. These are the spirit that pleases the Lord. 
Hey, that's why every opportunity that we get, we give him glory, honor, praises to Yahweh. And his only begotten son, the king of kings, the lord of lords, Yahweh Shai. This is his movie. Yahweh Shai came and did the will of his father. We are doing the will of Yahweh Shai. It's called order. We can never go to Yahweh without Yahweh Shai. No. We are doing the will of Yahweh Shai. Our king. He says, lift not up your horn or high. He says here, speak not with a stiff neck. That's how these people are. They are very proud because they think they, everything that they've accomplished, that's right, is by their own power. But here, Psalm 75, 6, it says, for promotion, you hear that? You being at the bottom, being at the top, guess what? It is the Lord. It says, for promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But guess what? But the Most High is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. That's right. All these kingdoms that the Lord and the dream that Nebuchadnezzar himself had, and then Daniel had the dream, all these nations, all these kingdoms that were supposed to rule, and they came, they rule, and they're gone. So America, it is the last leg of the Roman Empire. That's right, the last beast. So America, the same way all these nations, they had their time to rule, and now they know more. That's right, the same thing is about to happen to America. That's right. That's it. And then the Hawashai's kingdom. The kingdom. The everlasting kingdom. Family, we're going to continue. Let's, see, let's continue here. A metaphor of which Shakespeare himself would have been pleased to draw. Uh, let's turn to the bricks. Uh, this uh, hegemonic shift uh, that we see in front of us. You see everyone can see it. But I suspect most Americans can't see it. I know that most British people can't see it. Uh, they don't even know that Britain 50 years ago uh, ceased to be uh, a significant player in, in world events, except as the tail of the American dog. And I suspect the same is true in your country too. But in the rest of the world, judging by the queue of people now forming to join the BRICS and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, everyone else can read the writing on the wall, Professor. Yes, and they and you know part of my job here as a as a United States uh, person, I teach and work here, has been to try to catch up the American population uh, to become perhaps a population that can learn from what previous empires could not do to embrace the reality and come to terms with it. It is the judgment of many of us that the war uh, in, the U in Ukraine has more to do with the United States' attempt to control, to limit, uh, to contain the People's Republic of China than anything else. Uh, and that it's a hopeless effort. It is not working. It will not work. You're not going to change uh, the tectonic shifts that are going on in the world today. I mean, I, I try to remind people that as we speak, the total GDP of the BRICS is about 33% of world production compared to that of the G7, the United States and its allies. In case nobody doesn't know what the BRICS is, these are the nations coming together to do away with the dollar. Okay, it was started with BRICS. Uh, the first letter is uh, Brazil, uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, okay, they came together to do away with the dollar. They're going to be trading in their own currencies. And now they're talking about introducing a currency that is going to be backed by gold. Because we know America and their currency, the, uh, the fiat currency is not backed by anything. It's just printing and printing and printing. So these nations are about to do away with that. Okay, and that's what is happening. That's what they are afraid of. But let's, before we continue, let's go to the book of Job 14.5. Sorry, 14.4. It says, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. You hear that? Not one. You see, it says here, seeing his days are determined. The Lord set a bound for him, like we said, throughout in throughout history. The Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, he sets up the kingdoms and then he takes them down. In America, the same thing is about to happen to the last leg of the Roman Empire. You see here, seeing his days are determined. 
the number of his day, his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass it. There's nothing he can he can do. Yes, Ukraine, the Third World War to go back and and introduce the dollar. Nothing America can do right now and to bring back the Roman Empire. The West is finished because it is the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This is not by any man. So it doesn't matter what the Third World War, they are going to go at it. They're going to go for Third, third World War is coming simply because what? America still thinks that they can win. But they are making a fatal mistake because this here is the Lord that is orchestrating this thing here. Who can resist his will? Nobody. Nobody can resist the will of the Lord. This here, this whole movie, everything that we are watching, everything that we are going through right now was written before the foundation of the earth. That's the power that we serve. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. In the movie, there is a good guy and there's a bad guy. Every movie, yes. And now you are looking at the bad guy, Esau Edom. It's not anything that they've done. This is how the Lord wrote this movie. He says, the children not yet being born. You can get that account in the book of Genesis, uh, is it 20? Uh, is it Genesis 20? The, the kids yet, uh, you, see, you can get it from me. Also, uh, what's his name? Talk about it. Apostle Paul uh, spoke uh, on it on, in, uh, in uh, Romans chapter 9. He says, the children not yet being born. What am I doing? I must well bring it out. Let's go to, uh, let's go to quickly, family. Please bear with me. Let's go to the book of Romans. I said Romans, right? Romans 9, right? Let's go to Romans 9. Romans 9. Yes. It says here, For this is the word of the promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah, who was what? Abraham's, our forefather's our wife, shall have a son. Okay? And not only this, but when Rebecca, Rebecca is who? Isaac's wife, also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, hmm? for the children being not yet born. You see what I said earlier on? That what? This is the pleasure. The Lord is just doing all his pleasure. The fact that he chose us to be the righteous is not anything that we've done. This is his movie. This is his, <laughs> this is his program. <laughs> no fun. Everybody's just a robot, literally. Everybody's being controlled. This is the Lord's place. He's doing all his pleasure. He said, for the children being, yet, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. You hear that? Rebecca hasn't even met, uh, what is it called, uh, Isaac yet. They don't know each other. Isaac wasn't born yet. Hey, but the Lord wrote this hey? before the foundation of the, it says here, neither done good or evil that the purpose of the most high according to election might stand, not of works. You hear that? Not of works. It's not anything that we have done to deserve this mercy. That's why we give honor and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, that we are about to receive a kingdom that we didn't even work for. You hear that? We are receiving a kingdom that we did nothing for it. But of him that calleth, of him that calleth, eh? he says here, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. We know that what Esau, self-proclaimed white man, came out first. And Jacob, the 12 tribe family, the so-called Latinos, Negroes, African Americans. Yes, this is the blessings of the Lord. You are the blessed seed. You didn't do anything to deserve it. That is why I say at the moment that the Lord opens your eyes in the morning, Give honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for what he has done for us. You hear that? He says here, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's why the Lord is about to turn this place on fire. And the Lord is not going to have mercy upon them. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 18. You see that? It's not anything that we have done. He created them to be the wicked. And then he created us to be the righteous. That's why he gave us laws and statutes and commandments when we left Egypt. Eh? That's why, family, we have to be very, very grateful. We have to appreciate the true mercies of David. Eh? Look at what the Lord has done for us. 
We haven't, there is not anything that we've done. The Lord is about to bless us with something that we didn't work for. That is what is coming. The kingdom is coming to an end. America is finished. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. Nothing anybody can do about it. Let's continue. That is about 29%. I mean, they're not even equal anymore. The BRICS have moved ahead. They're growing faster than the G7, uh, to say the least. Uh, the writing is on the wall. The direction is crystal clear. And it would be a lot wiser and a lot more respectful of human life to stop the war in Ukraine, to stop the killing and destruction of those people there by sitting down and reaching a, a settlement that everyone can live with because the alternative, this attempt to move against the, the process of history is, is simply a, a crazy effort that should be rejected by people who understand finally what the reality is. Now, uh, before we come back to the BRICS and the currency issue, uh, I wondered what your view was about the, on the face of it, extraordinary odyssey of a 100-year-old man. I mean, he makes Mitch McConnell uh, look like a young lad. Uh, Henry Kissinger took a 14-hour flight to Beijing, was treated like a visiting president of the United States rather than a centenarian private citizen. What do you think that trip was all about? Well, I think uh, as someone who has spent a good bit of time studying China, I think what, what the point, at least from the Chinese perspective, was that Henry Kissinger will be remembered for having arranged the trip back in the early 1970s uh, of himself and the then President Nixon to go to China to renew uh, diplomatic relations, to give up on the failed program of isolating China as a way to repress it that did not work. And Kissinger and Nixon knew it. It, all it did was to give the Japanese and the Europeans a privileged access to China because the United States wouldn't uh, do it. This was self-destructive you know, self as American policy. But the real purpose, I think, was to say Kissinger represents a coming to terms with a rising China. It represented an agreement to work together in the World Trade Organization and in a number of other places. Just a reminder, the BRICS, China, what are you seeing with China, Russia, Iran, North, sorry, yeah, North Korea, family, the Lord is using them to bring down Babylon the Great, America. That's it, the West, period. The BRICS are not going to be the next ruling. China is not going to be the next superpower. No. It is Yahweh Shai, the kingdom of heaven, is coming down immediately after this one goes down. Yes. You're going to see it. The kingdom of heaven, Yahweh Shai's kingdom, is coming. The moment this one falls, eh? but the Lord is tearing up the pot. Because America is not going to go down quietly. And this is going to lead to third world war. And that's how the Lord Yahweh, our power, the power of Abraham, has set it up. Isaiah 46, 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am the power and there is none else. You hear that? There is none else. Again, there's no, the rest of the nation, whatever they call their power, whatever they worship, is nothing but idol. That's right. Idols, just pure idols. They can bear, they can talk, they can walk, they can feed themselves, family. No. We worship the almighty power. Hey, when you hear the thunderstorm, when you hear the lightning, that's right, you hear the storm. Yeah, family, our power created that. That's right. Yahweh, through Yahweh, he created that. That's the one that you should fear. Hmm? 
When you see the sun comes out in the morning, that's the one that you should fear. You see the stars, the moon, that's the one that you should fear. Yahweh. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He says, remember the former things of old, for I am the power and there's none else. I am the power and there is none like me. Hey, declaring the end from the beginning. He gave that dream to Daniel. For Daniel to write down, to tell everybody, these are the kingdoms that I'm setting up. And I'm going to take all of them down and I'm going to establish my king. My son, my only begotten son. That's right. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel, whatever I say, hey, shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He created Esau to be wicked. Hey, no, he can't resist his will. That's why he continued to be wicked. That's why they are telling you that we have more than two genders. Hey, that's right. Now we have 60 genders. That's why he says, no, it's okay for two women to hook up, two men to hook up. Yes. Because that is the Lord the Lord gave him. Eh? That's the Lord the Lord gave him. That is the Lord the Lord gave him. That's why the Lord asked the question. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? No, Ethiopian can change their skin. Because that's what the Lord gave him. That's the color that the Lord gave them forever. Or the leopard, his spots. The spots that you see on the leopard, can they change it? No, they cannot change it. Because that is forever. And here, then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. So if the Lord make, made you wicked, can you become righteous? No, you can never become righteous. You were created to be the wicked. This is to kind of live and let live. You might call it peaceful economic coexistence. And over the subsequent 40 years, the 1980s through our time, the Chinese economy boomed and the United States economy boomed. They didn't destroy each other. They were able to live together and to prosper together. And I think for the Chinese, watching the shift in the United States and Europe towards more and more economic nationalism, the Chinese see that as less of a world to grow in than the one that Nixon and Kissinger opened up. And it was therefore a none too subtle appeal for a new Kissinger to come forward and continue the peaceful coexistence because, to be honest, it worked even better for China than it did for the United States and quite and by quite a, a, a big a difference it is amazing uh, given your views and mine on Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger that we can look back on their age at least in that regard as being an age of greater wisdom in foreign affairs isn't it yep they were driven in that time to to make a break it was so obvious that it wasn't working that we can be hopeful, as I believe uh, Xi Jinping probably was, hopeful that maybe again a more realistic administration uh, in Washington, uh, not out of a notion of global peace, that's more than we can hope for, but out of a notion of the comparative advantage for the United States, uh, Warfare with China is a dead end. Nuclear war is a complete end. And short of that, you're not going to turn the Chinese around. Mr. Trump's tariff war didn't do it. Mr. Trump's trade war didn't do it. Uh, the war in Ukraine didn't do it. Uh, Janet Yellen's trip last week didn't do it. I mean, how many times do you have to see that there's a dead end where you are going before someone makes a career out of saying, hmm, the emperor doesn't have any clothes, so let's get him a genuine outfit. <laughs> yes. The emperor doesn't have any clothes because it is the Lord that is removing the clothes. That's right. 
He says, uh, how are the tents of Esau searched out? That's right. And through the, pre- the holy precepts, the holy scriptures. Esau is finished. And the, the, all the, uh, the final, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, the curtain call, you want to call it? Or uh, it's going to be the third world war. Because it was also prophesied in the book of Revelation eleven fourteen. You see, we have a power that declared the end from the beginning. This revelation was given to our forefather, John, in the island of Patmos, the last apostle eh, that Yahweh Shai kept eh, because he wanted to make sure and he tells us what is going to be happening in the last day before he comes. And then he sent the angel to go reveal. That's what revelation means, to reveal and to John what is going to be happening in the last days. Revelation eleven fourteen. The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. You ask, what is the second woe? The second woe is the second world war, which came in what? 19. 14, no, sorry, 1939 to 1945. Prior to that, the previous page, uh, chapter, uh, sorry, the previous uh, v- uh, chapter in chapter 8, it tells you what? Chapter 8, uh, Revelation chapter 8, actually, let's go there. Let's go there quickly. Revelation 8, 13, I believe. Revelation 13, 8, 13 tells us what? It says here, and I held, I beheld, and I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe. That's what three world war, right? Destruction, three destruction. To the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. And then we went back to 11, and we know that all these wars came and passed. The first world war came and passed, and here it's reminding you that while the second war is passed, eh? the second war, which was the second world war from 1939 to 1945. It says here, the second war is passed, and behold, behold, the third war cometh quickly. I have an article that I want to bring out and share with you. So the question here is, let's go there. It says here, Russia and China joint military drills in Asia are making Pentagon very nervous because at the end of the day, it's not just going to be Russia. It's not going to be just China. North Korea is going to join in. Iran is going to join in. Eh? That's why Third World War family is going to be the biggest party. It is coming and nobody is going to resist it. I just read it to you. We have received If it's in the Holy Scriptures, in the Holy Bible family, you can bet your house on it is going to happen. Let's read a bit here. Russia and China's joint military drills in Asia are making the Pentagon very nervous. Why is it making America? I thought they were the biggest. They have over 850 army bases in the world. Hmm? Back in the years, America was able to just go into countries and just destroy them. Steal their resources. Vietnam, Korea, Eh? Uh, in the recent one being the recent uh, uh, nations that they destroy Iraq, Afghanistan, now uh, now uh, Ukraine. Yes, that's what they are doing right now. Mm-hmm. Because family, when it comes to Iraq and some of these nations, family, they are they are they don't have that they they, are, they don't have that military might like Russia, China. No, family, you see how the Lord set it up. Now, all these nations now, they have what we call nuclear power. That's right. They have nuclear missiles, family. Yes. Because when they convinced Gaddafi to get rid of his nuclear weapons, the moment Gaddafi, eh, initially when Gaddafi wanted to get away from the U.S. dollar, hmm, and they convinced Gaddafi to get rid of his nuclear weapon, and then guess what? They moved in. Because they knew that if Gaddafi held on to that nuclear weapon, he was going to use it. But now they convinced him to get rid of it. And guess what? We know what happened to Libya. Look at the state of Libya right now. That's why. That's right. This is the cause. That's right. This is what the devil did. Hmm? This Esau Edom. But now he has bit more than he can chew. Now he's coming against what? 
two superpowers, China and Russia. North Korea is going to join in because we know how North Korea feels about America. But this is all the will of the Lord. That's right. If anybody tells you that the Lord, Yahweh, the power that we serve loves America, family, run away from them. They don't know that. They don't know the power that we serve. The Lord hates Esau, Edom. I just, we just saw it. And he hates America. Babylon the Great. He told you he's going to turn it into the lake of fire. That's what is coming. It says Russia and China's joint military drills in Asia are making the Pentagon very nervous. Why are they nervous? I thought they have all this might. They have all these powers. It said Russia and China are stepping up joint military drills in Asia and the Pacific. And their moves are starting to alarm the Pentagon. On Sunday, Beijing and Moscow completed a massive air and naval exercise in the Sea of Japan, including anti-submarine missions, sea and air escort training and combat games, according to Chinese state media. Leaders says the practice runs were focused on safeguarding the region's maritime transportation. Possibly a mocking reference to the language Biden administration has used to justify its own growing military presence in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. Hmm? That's right. This is what is happening. It's making them nervous. Family, I'll put this article in the description box. I'll put this in the description box and you can access it. Yes, the Lord is bringing an end to all this. The kingdom is coming to an end and we are rejoicing. Hey, eh? the kingdom is coming to an end and we are rejoicing. Let's go to the book of, um, uh, let's go to Revelation. Uh, Revelation is it 21. It says go to Revelation 21. Let me see what is that? Revelation 21. Is it 21 or 22? Let me see here. I think it's 22. Oh, yes, 22. Yeah, let's read it from verse 7. We're going to finish with this. Revelation chapter 22, starting from verse 7. It says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard them and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. The angel, like I said, the angels are our brothers. Yes. Okay, they are our brothers. And they go around family. Right now, we have the angels and camp around about us. Okay, they are around us. So you got to be mindful what you are doing in these last days. Okay? You got to watch your steps. Okay? You can continue to live in sin. You can continue. Do your possibly best. You can continue to live in sin. Okay? We are about to go home. You don't want to be left behind. The king is coming. Okay? Again, it says here, Then says he unto me, See that do it not, for I am thy fellow servant. Okay, we know that the angels what they serve the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shad and of thy brethren. You hear that? They are our what? Our brothers. It says here, the, and the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book worship the Most High. Okay, that's basically what he's saying. But here it says, and he says unto me, seal not the sayings of this prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. That's why we are prophesying. When we come across this news article, family, we prophesying. We're telling you that the Lord told us that these things are happening. Eh? Then we are prophesying. We're telling you, we're about to go home. Make sure that your house is right. Your house meaning what? Your mind, your soul, everything that you do in family. Make sure you're ready to meet your king. If your Hawashai shows up today, we, are you ready to go? You have to ask yourself, are you ready to go? Are you doing, are you doing what pleases him? Eh? Eh? It says here, Then said he unto me, See that I do it now. For, no, I just read that. It says here, and he says unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And here, he said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. 
and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You hear that? Yahweh Shai is coming. They that are filthy, let them remain filthy still. And we don't want to be, we don't want to remain filthy. Family, this word here is the one that is keeping us pure. That's right. Pure before the groom. The groom is coming for the bride. The bride is the church. That's right. You see, the bride is the church. I'm not talking about plantation Christianity, family. The church, that's right. The elect. Okay, the elect. Because the Lord is not coming for everybody. In case somebody wants us, just let's go there. It says the Lord is saying what? He's not coming for everybody. Again, I, was, I wasn't good. I was, let's close here with them. The Lord is not coming for everybody. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew 24, 22 quickly. Actually, you know what? Though? Let's go to 29. Let's go to Matthew 20. Matthew, what did I do here? Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Let's go to 29. The Lord is not coming for everybody. He said, this is a red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. He says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, including your third world war, all the civil war, all the chaos that's going to be going on. That's right. We're not going to be rescued and go somewhere for seven years and then come back. No, that seven year tribulation has been fulfilled already. That goes back to 70 AD. That's been fulfilled already, family. We're talking about here. It says here, immediately, after all the chaos that we're about to go through, tribulation of those days, including the micro to the CHIP, the Third World War, immediately after that, those days shall the sun be darkened. That goes to show you that what? It's not going to be the bricks. Russia is not going to rule. China is not going to rule. India is not going to rule. The moment that Third World War pop off, look up. Prepare yourself for the coming of our king, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All your rulers, your kings, your ministers, your governors, they're, never gonna, they're not going to have answer for what the Lord is about to do. They're all going to be shaken up. Okay? And then shall appear the sign of the son of man, our king Yahweh Shai, in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Yeah? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds with heaven, with power and great glory. They're going to look up and they're going to see all the so-called UFOs. But they are the chariots of Israel. You hear that? The chariots of Israel. That's how we're getting out of here. Lord willing. And he shall send his angels. Listen to this. He sent his angels to do what? What is the Lord our King Yahweh Shai sending his angels to do? Let's find out. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet, and they shall gather together what? His elect. His elect. Let's look up that word elect. Let's go back to Matthew 24. I want to, let's look up the elect. Let's go here. Let's look up the word elect. Mm? In case somebody want to say, oh, the Lord is coming to save everybody. Anybody that calling the name of Jesus, they're going to be saved. No. The Lord is only coming for an elect. You hear that? He says here. Elect. Let's go. Matthew 24, 31. Let's look up the word elect. Let's look up. Let's look up. Where is elect? Elect. And the Greek word for elect is what? Electos. Strong's G, 1588. Eclectos. 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 What are those? Picked out, chosen, eh? Pre-choice, uh, select, example, the best of its kind or class, excellence, preeminent, applied to certain individuals, Christians, eh? It's talking about the elect, eh? They were, they were picked before the foundation of the earth, predestined. Eh? Let's let's precept that. Let's go to the book of is it Ephesians? Is it Ephesians one? Uh, let's go to. Uh, I think it's Ephesians. I think Ephesians one.
Yes, this Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the power and the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who have blessed us with a spiritual blessing in heaven places in Yahweh Shai, Mashiach. It says, According as he has chosen us in him, listen to this, in him before the foundation of the world. The elect were picked before the foundation of the world. It's not by works. That's right. This is the Lord Yahweh through his only begotten son doing all his pleasure. Hey? The elect were picked what? Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. You hear that? The good pleasure of his will is not anything that we have done. That's right. That's the elect. Family is coming for the elect. Eh? Elect. Again, he says here, Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect that were picked before the foundation of the earth. From the four winds, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in Jamaica, Barbados, and California, New York, and it doesn't matter where the elect are. The Lord is going to send his angels and they're going to beam up his elect that were picked before the foundation of the earth. Again, let's read that again. This sounds so good. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All praises honor glory to the power of abraham isaac and jacob yahweh our heavenly father and his only begotten son our king who is coming with michael the archangels and thousands and thousands and thousands of our brothers that's why the angels are our brothers you better believe it and they are not coming to sit around and negotiate with putin or xi jinping or biden oh no he is because right now we are his mouthpiece. We are speaking to them before he shows up. Yes? So when he shows up, all he knows is violence. He's bringing violence upon the land. That's what he's coming to do. He's not coming to sit down with anybody. He's coming to destroy them and establish his kingdom. That is what is coming. So family, I hope you were edified. All praises, honor unto our power. The only power that matters. Yahweh and his only begotten son. Our king, that's, that's what, possession, possessive pronoun. Our king, Yahweh Shai. We are the only nations that can call upon him. All praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Shalom.